Well, good morning and uh, happy new year to you um, on this first thought for the day of 2022. So, just wondering what we can expect in, in 2022. Um, you know, what would happen when the clocks turn from December the 31st to, to January the 1st? Would everything suddenly change? Would, would all our problems go away? Um, judging by some of the things that I see on social media, it seems that a lot of people have that hope uh, in mind. And between COVID lockdowns and civil unrest and political tension and all the natural disasters we've seen in 2021, you know, it's, it's, it was a, a difficult year. Um, and many, many people take the new year to, to reflect on the past year and to make resolutions for the future. And uh, just thinking, as a Christian, what, what should our response be? Well, the Bible doesn't have any specific instructions about New Year's resolution one way or the other. We've all got our perspectives and, and convictions on that matter, but a lot of us participate in, in some form. But scripture does include themes that are important. Repentance is preached throughout the whole Bible. Repentance is a, a type of resolution, a change of direction in life based on, on belief, a, a re-engagement of our will to follow uh, God in, in, in relationship with him. And the Bible's full of uh, statements like rejoice in the Lord always and pray without ceasing, go and make disciples. These all require intentional action that resolutions suggest we have to make. And we're told to examine our lives in the faith. We're told we can't, uh, we, that we're told to work out our salvation. We, we can't do that without intent and belief making a firm decision. James tells us to be confident in our prayers of faith. There are dangers in making resolutions, however, that first we, we warned against holding too tightly to our plans. You know, expectations are powerful things and planning in wisdom is wisdom, but we, we have to realise that the journey with Christ is full of interruptions and twists and turns, and we often have to adjust our own human expectations um, because God might be up to something different, new, different than we thought. And secondly, the, the changes we desire, even, even biblical ones, can only be made with God's will and, and, and grace and power. We can't change things in our own strength. Too often we try to do that. These resolutions, if we make any, must be in relationship with God and a complete reliance upon his power. And then we have to consider the motivation behind our resolutions. Is it, is it God's heart for us? Uh, or is it based on selfish desires? We need God's discernment to, to know the difference. And, you know, God doesn't work on our calendar or timetable. And we need to regularly reflect and repent if, if we are to, to live in that space, that we, in that relationship with God. And we can make life changes at any time, can't we? It doesn't have to be, begin in Jan, on January the 1st. So what would be some good resolutions to make, given all that I've said so far? And, and one I think is really important, and, and has been uh, highlighted, I think, during this time of COVID, that we need to stay connected with, peop with, with our faith community. You know, between lockdowns and uncertainty and the chaos, the importance of remaining in community with our Christian family, has been highlighted. I was speaking on the phone with a, with a much loved and faithful member of our congregation and someone who is vulnerable because of age and health. And she hasn't set 
uh, foot inside the, the physical building of the church for nearly two years because of Covid. But she takes part in stream services and keeps up with the thoughts for the day that we put out. And she said that because of this, she she doesn't feel separate from us, from the from from the community, the worshiping community. She still feels very part of it, and that was, and and that was really important to her, and it was really important for me to hear that. You know, there was a, a Gallup poll taken. It's it's just over a year ago now that um, that during the period of the early period of COVID, there'd been a sharp increase in anxiety and depression in every group um, except one: people who were connected to a, a faith community. Now, it doesn't have to be in large groups or in a church building, does it? It can be in homes or even a walk in the park with someone um, from your faith community or on Zoom, as we've, we've often done. But we do need to resolve to continue to meet together and encouraging one another in our faith and, re and also remain flexible and open to, to what God is doing. Another uh, resolution we might make is slow down you know take time to rest we we live in a culture that's fast-paced and it's filled with we're bombarded with all sorts of things and it's god heart it's god's heart that we take time to rest it's not when we are running a million miles a minute that we understand that he's god but when we're still resting includes trusting that it isn't all up to us Resting, we can rely on God who is living and active, and we can find our rest in Him. And another thing we can do, we, we might we spark speak the life of the gospel into into the world, into the chaos of the world. And more than ever, I think in the midst of great uncertainty and fear, the world is searching for something that's real and secure and unshakable and loving and good. And our faith gives us that, and we need to speak it into the world that cries out for it. Each of one of us has some influence in our relationships, whether it's family or friends or co-workers or on social media, whether large or small. And we have to be good stewards of that influence, speaking hope and life of the gospel into those relationships, into those situations. Don't get dragged into arguments that don't matter speak the truth in love and encourage others to lift their eyes to god that's what the world needs to hear and challenge injustice big and small you know the world has lost a great beacon for justice in archbishop archbishop desmond tutu we need to look to his example to challenge injustice when we see it we need to also be mindful of creating unjust situations for those who we come, come across. And we have to resolve to love our neighbours. Love, love is the answer. Let us live by love, and in the, by love and in the love of Christ. Let's resolve to reflect his love for us in all that we do, all that we come upon in our daily lives. Let us be reaching out to others. And finally, but most important, of God, from which all the other resolutions that I've just spoken about will spring from. Well, I'll speak to you again on Thursday, hopefully, and you look after yourselves. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.